Let me just record. Okay. All right. So what is your ideal client? What does she believe in? What does she care about? What does she stand for? What does she look like? What does she wear? Where does she, what does she drive? What is her income? What is important to her? Um, where does she shop? Um, I mean, those are the important things you need to think about when you're thinking about who's your ideal client. Myself, um, I want to have clients who believe in natural solutions. Um, they care about their families and they care about their friends. They stand for things that are natural. Um, they, they either looking for something more natural or they're struggling in their, in their health and so need something that's natural. Um, they, what drives them um, is being well, staying well, um, being healthy, being fit. Um, they're not, not shy about spending, so they're willing to spend it on themselves to stay healthy. Um, and the important thing is that they, they're not looking at the cost, they're looking at quality. Um, and that's my ideal client. But also the fact that I'm, I'm, my ideal client would be, and it's just an example, is people that believe the same things as me, they have the same heart for other people um, believe in um, God and have a high level of integrity. And it's not necessary that they, they will all be like that. But I think um, that's something that I, I would really love to have people around me that think the same. Okay, and then the third thing she says is, what, do, what does your ideal client need help with? Okay, where does she need help? Uh, how can you help her? Uh, are there barriers in the way for you to be able to help her? Um, how does she want to feel when she's gotten that help? And what are her pain points? Um, and I'll get into that just uh, in a little bit about the pain points. Um, that's a, a good way to try and see how you can help people is by looking at what is the pain point. What is the um, wait, Louise dropped off. Um, what is the ideal way of, a, of approaching them um, and talking to them? Okay. So then uh, the fourth thing is um, how how can you help them? Um, by using your unique flavor or your unique voice, your unique story. Um, what sets you apart? Um, what tools do you have to help them? And what's your process? Um, so I went over that and it, to me, what sets me apart is that I've walked this journey with, with a special needs child before. Um, and that the tools that I have is my personal experience. Um, I can do a step-by-step -step approach to help people. Um, I can break it down for them. And then I can, the process that I use is bite sizes, so small amounts of information so that they can understand um, and not feel overwhelmed. Um, so, but that's my process. So your, your process might be different. Um, and why is the product important? Why is it necessary? Why will it help them? Uh, what happens when they use it? Why should they buy from you? Um, and uh, what is your customer service? Uh, what are you offering them that is unique to you and not like a cookie cutter doTERRA uh, person? They can just go to anybody in doTERRA. Um, what is unique about your experience and what you're offering um, that will make make them drawn to you um, and want to, to hear what you have to say. Okay. Um, the sixth thing that she talks about, um, finding your ideal customer, is where. Where is your ideal customer spending time? Um, are they spending time on social media platforms, online? Um, when they're purchasing, how do they decide that it's legit um, or not? Oh, shame, Eloise says she lost connection. Um, where could you meet that person, uh, you know, in person? Um, and where do they shop? Something that I didn't ever think of. Um, you know, where does someone that would be my ideal customer, where, where would they be shopping? And uh, that answer for me is online. 
because uh, that's how doTERRA works is we, we purchase our stuff online. So if they're very much into getting their stuff online and um, doing research for themselves and things like that, and um, that seems to be um, our ideal customer. All right, so social media is, is story writing, especially Instagram. It's small blogs, it's small stories about your life. Uh, it's not um, just advertising and putting on uh, a picture um, and you know people will automatically come and hear what you have to say. It's, um, it's getting them engaged and seeing that you have a story and that you are a real person, you're not just a business, um, that you have a life behind your business, and this is how you do things. Um, the product is just a piece of your story, it's not the whole story. Um, and so that's what people want to see. Um, well, I think Ash also dropped off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry on talking. <laughs> <laughs> myself <laughs> what happened okay I'm gonna pause it pause the record okay so like I said the product is a piece of your story it's not your whole story and um, people want to see you being human and being real and um, what are you doing with your family and where are you going? Um, that they, but it doesn't have to be all the time. Um, it can be snippets. Um, and she said uh, something about 80-20 rule, but I'll, I'll talk about that first now. I think I did write it down. Yeah, I did. It's, it's a little bit later. Okay. So she talks about uh, attraction marketing versus network marketing. So network marketing is you reaching out to people, you contacting people, you uh, are, um, you know, following up and things like that. And where she talks about attraction marketing is that people will be attracted to who you are, um, what you stand for, um, what you believe in. And they will only know what all that when you're putting it out there and speaking about it and telling your story. Um, and so that's something that um, um, I've really been drawn to at the moment because um, I was, you know, I, I was enjoying the Lee Shetterby way and I was enjoying doing that because it got some things done and put me in a perspective where I can do schedules and things like that. But, um, along the way, I wasn't doing it authentically from me, you know, um, and now that I'm thinking about it, this is the way I want to do it. This is, I want to do it. I want to share it uh, from my heart and not from a, you know, boom, 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 you know, one, two, three kind of step. And yes, I'll still keep the step, which is awesome. Uh, I, I want to speak from my heart. I want, to, I want people to know who I am. And, and I know that sometimes it's difficult to, to share that over sh social media, but it's, I think it's important for them to hear it. All right. And they, she did share about is your ideal leader and what kind of leader that you're wanting and um, she kind of says the same things about the leader um that's what she said about the ideal customer and she's she said write it all down which i have done who's your ideal leader what does she believe in what does she care about who do you want to be standing next to you like joy was saying, saying the other day who do you want to be standing next to you when you're a diamond when um, you're leading thousands of people. Who do you want being your closest friend? Um, and yeah, that was something that I, I had to sit down and really think about. And I was, um, I, I grappled over this one. It was, it wasn't easy, but I think it's necessary for us to think about that. Who do you want to be walking with you, walking this journey with you, and um, stepping on that that uh you know red carpet you know for the the diamond walk um i think it's really important to think about okay so number one and i know ash you love this one be a product of the product okay let your passion lead the way let your lifestyle um attract to those that are similar 
So when they see this is your lifestyle, this is how you do it, this is what you're doing day in, day out, and it's like weird stories, like brushing your teeth, and, and they, they want to see things like that, which is weird to me, but anyway. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, they want to see that, the, I mean, you don't have to be super intimate about it. It doesn't have to be like the most darkest secrets. It just has to be little snippets of what you're doing, how you're doing it, um, and, and touching on those pain points that they might be dealing with. Okay, and so your life will attract similar people into your inner circle. Um, and think about, would you follow you? If you were on social media and you were scrolling away, would you stop and read that that you've just put on and oftentimes I go no because I want to read something short me I don't want to read this long spiel about the difference between kapava and CBD I want something short and sweet I want it uh, concise um, and I want it to the point because that's what I want to read this is what it does this is how it does it in the story so for me, um, everybody's different. Like for me, I want something that is the point. Um, and then share your experiences. Like I said, share those day-to-day -day things. Um, and some people think you being salesy or spammy or annoying that you're, you know, um, you're that person who's always phoning cold calls and things like that. Um, but don't, because that's not the way we're doing it. And we're doing it to make connections and to make relationships. And something that I did learn, and I've actually written it and put it, I don't know if you could see that with my light. Ah, you are. Disconnect from the outcome. So I get really emotional, really depressed at the end of the month. Really. I'm so hard on myself have reached the goal that I was reaching for and if I don't reach that goal I am miserable absolutely miserable I actually really depressed my family knows don't come near me don't talk to me um because I mean even if I get my rank even if I get enrollment or 11 enrollments it's still not good enough the one one month we got 11 enrollments in the in the in the team which was awesome um I was still so depressed. And what I've realized is I've ha actually had to physically remove myself from the outcome so that I'm doing the work, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, forget about what's going to be happening at the end of the month. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it's okay. But I'm going to still work towards that. But I'm emotionally disconnecting from that outcome, I think has really been important for me. Um, that's something Keely also said. Don't attach an emotion to what, what that person is going to do. If they're going to say yes or no, don't attach your emotions to it. Um, you have lots and lots of fears inside your head that you're an imposter, that you're going to be judged, you're not an expert. Um, and she said, actually go and write them all down. Write all those fears down and actually just cross them out or burn them, or scratch them up and tear it up and throw it away. Because in this kind of business that we're doing, we have to be fearless. We have to step out of our comfort zones and out of our box and follow your gut, know what your heart's saying, um, think out of the box, um, you know, go beyond the boundaries that you've always set for yourself. And I know um, it does talk about those self-limiting beliefs um you know i'm not good enough i'm not worthy um things are always going to be like this um i'm always going to have to do it this way um and it's not true because we can change things by doing these small little uh, things that are um increments and little steps towards a, a goal that we're setting for ourselves um set a timer as well for yourself if you're going onto social media put on a timer don't go scrolling. That's my, I do it all the time. I go, I'm going to check this. And then it's been like half an hour later and I've done nothing. It's, it's not, not being productive at all. 
And so she said, set a timer for yourself so that you're not going onto social media to scroll. Just go and scroll later on this evening. When you're getting your stuff done, go on, get it done, get it finished, go off, and then go on to another task. Um, she says, time block. And I know Joy does talk about time blocking. I, I, I really enjoyed uh, Joy's course. Like, I think it's a four-day course. Um, I did send that one to you, Ash. Time blocking. And that really helped me to be able to just, you know, block out that time. This is what I'm doing in this time and stick the schedule for myself um, and don't allow any ne negativity on your social media. None. Um, if, if it's friends that just continue to, uh, you know, troll you or, I mean, even if they're not friends and they keep, they keep putting on comments that are just, um, derogatory and how dare you say this or do you think you are type of things block them you're allowed to block people and I'm like you are <laughs> because I, I've actually I've been on a group and um, somebody said to me you know this is not a sales group and I'm like I'm not here to sell something I'm here to help somebody and um, then I didn't do it for like a year I didn't comment on groups I didn't comment in on social media and I thought you know I thought I'm going to be judged again and lambasted um I actually did it like last week I went and commented on there and this guy came back and he says uh, but you're wrong and I said okay as far as I know this group is a non-judgmental group please don't judge me because you don't know my story and I was like oh I can put on a boundary I can say, don't judge me. This is my story. This is how I express myself. Um, so it was actually quite um, empowering. Just put that one little comment out there. <laughs> um, okay, and then she said, be focused. So if you've got your list out for what you're going to be doing for the day, keep your focus. I know Ash, you're really good at that, um, even though you've got all the kids running around and playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's it's really good to be focused um setting a timer for everything especially in social media um instagram is don't force yourself to do instagram don't force yourself to do um social media um use the stories uh she says um she does six to ten stories a day which is a lot. And I'm still trying to figure out how to do that because it, that's a lot of information. That's a lot of stuff. Okay, so I'm, I'm still getting used to that. She says at least six to 10 uh, stories because people look at stories. I don't look at stories. Lots of other people do. And I realized that also on WhatsApp because now I'm putting it on my WhatsApp stories and people are looking at them. People are watching what you're doing. Um, and yeah, we don't always realize it. But then when I go back and I go look, like 50 people had looked at it or 100 people had looked at my Instagram stories. Um, so it really does, they do watch what you're doing and eventually it will trickle down. Um, all right, so facts on Instagram is that brand engagements are 10 times higher. Um, so if you do have a brand, it will be 10 times higher engagement. I did learn this week that LinkedIn actually has more organic engagement um, and more organic reach than Instagram and Facebook do at the moment because um, Facebook and Instagram require you to actually want you to pay for ads to boost your, your uh, posts. Um, so there's no organic reach going on there. Um, it's uh, LinkedIn actually has a really good organic reach, which I'm now a LinkedIn subscriber or whatever you want to call it, because I want to reach people organically. I don't want to have to pay for stuff. Okay. Um, a third of the people that are on uh, Instagram actually purchase online. And that's a third more. Um, sorry. Instagram is 10 times higher than Facebook. Sorry. And then... Um, a third of uh, Instagram users just online. So they can, 
there is an option to put your products on Instagram and they can purchase it straight from Instagram. Um, yeah, that's quite interesting. I'm just looking at time. How long have we gone? Um, I'm going to speak for another 10 minutes. Is that okay, Ash? Okay. All right. So um, the difference between a business account and a personal account in Instagram, and I think Keely uses, a, I think she uses the business one. No, she uses the personal one. I like the business one because of certain things. I'll, I'll tell you the difference between the two. Okay, so the business account, you have a contact button. Um, you can look up the analytics of what your um, what your posts have been doing. I am busy, lovey. Okay. Can you close, please? I'm busy. Quickly. Quickly. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, you can do, you can look up the analytics of your followers, what they're what they're looking at, um, how often you, you get they get to see your stuff. There are ad capabilities, and you can put in an address and a location in there. And then on the other side is the personal account. Um, you have private settings, which Keely says she doesn't recommend um, because then people don't see your posts. Um, it's a higher organic reach than the business account. Uh, and there is an ability to connect and you can do multiple pages and profiles. So I've actually got both. I use my business one for you know, all my business posts and a little bit of personal. And then my personal is only my personal. Um, and then he says, if you're doing the branding, keep it short, keep it memorable, keep it searchable, uh, keep it professional, and keep it available on all your medias. So uh, if you're posting on Instagram, make it automatically accessible on your Facebook. Um, make sure that it's um, short and, con and concise, like I, I like it. I've seen some people just put on just like a whole book worth of, you know, on Instagram or Facebook, um, keep it memorable. She says actually put emojis in between words and it catches people's eyes and it keeps them focused. Um, and then professional, so don't be all personal, um, searchable. So put your uh, hashtags in between 11 and 15 hashtags at the bottom of your post is um, people will be able to um, see you more often. Um, yeah, so I'm going to open it up for some questions. Ash, do you have some questions, love? No, I'm okay, Chams, but I just wanted to find out about Instagram. Yes. Okay, just got a message that came on. So I do have an Instagram account, but I'm not sure how to use it. I think I just probably went and read a couple of things and liked it, but I haven't been like posting and, and stuff like that, which I think um, I should be doing as well, because I've noticed when you put up stuff on your stories, like your WhatsApp, I put up stuff on my WhatsApp all the time and on um, Facebook, and you do get leads from there and you do get customers. So sometimes you gonna put it and you think nobody's watching and then you go back 60 people had already looked at it and like um even with with the pie business as well if you post up you're gonna get a call coming and somebody's wanting to buy so put it whether somebody is watching it or not watching it because it is gonna reach somebody some yeah. way yeah. yeah okay so what are your questions with regards to instagram Um, I actually need to find my way around the temps. Okay. I've actually have not posted or stuff like that on it, but I do have an account. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's, there's some really nice. I'll come with you one day. And then I'll... Yeah, sure. Um, but there is some nice, um, it's called, I'm using Planoly. So it's spelled P-L-A-N-O-L-Y. Then there's another one called Plan with the mm -hmm. double N, and they they do scheduled Instagrams for you. 
So you can set the schedule and it's free. So you can set your schedule months in advance if you want to and put in your posts and leave them and they'll and they'll go off automatically. Um, I know doTERRA Social does do um, scheduled posts as well, but then you have to go and, yeah. and approve it. And then um, there was another one. So then you don't have to be on social media the whole time. You can just go and schedule the post and let them run. Um, there was another one I wrote down. I can't see it. But if I remember, I'll let you know what it what it's called. I'm using Planoly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave this one as it is. I'm going to just stop the record.